I'm Reggie Godino, Chief Science Officer for Steep Hill Laboratories. Uh, you can learn a lot of things from the DNA of, of the plant. Um, you can look at the genetics of the plant itself to determine uh, what it may be producing. You can look at the microbiome of the plant, and so that's actually not the DNA of the plant, but you can actually look at the microbial colonization of the plant itself by that same DNA extract. So DNA testing allows you to, to get a lot of information that would not normally be available just by chemical analysis or plate-based um, enrichment-based methods for, for microbial detection. DNA-based testing is, is particularly important um, as it is the, the way that most government agencies are, are going towards testing these days. So right now the USDA, FDA, EPA even for air quality are, are looking at microbial DNA as the arbiter of whether something actually is present or not. DNA, as I like to say, is the truth. If the DNA is there, the organism was there. If the DNA is not there, then the organism could not have possibly been there. Um, so what DNA-based testing allows you to do, and what we've been doing at Steep Hill, is to um, try to bring that level of, of accuracy and species specificity to the industry that you can only get with DNA-based testing. And, and Steep Hill has been in, uh, particularly busy in that respect with Pathogen DX, our partner, where we've uh, developed a, a DNA-based microarray assay. So um, I have a very personal story that kind of fuels my passion. My dad was uh, afflicted with a, a really bad stroke, and the industry was kind of what came to the rescue. Um, they came, people in the industry came and found me and, and gave me for free product that helped my dad get better. And it was at that point that I kind of realized what my true calling should have been in the industry, and Steep Hill uh, allowed me to do that. So I, I'm very fortunate that I, I am where I am, and I've been given the freedom to do what I do. So, this is going to, I don't think any state has gotten an entire set of regulations correct. There are states that have gotten various aspects of that, of that, uh, of those regulations correct. Like, for instance, I, I believe that um, the, the batch size requirements and the statistical, the statistical sampling for uh, batch size in Oregon is very well done. That was a very well put together set of regulations for, for sampling. However, unfortunately, you know, there are other weaknesses in that state. Um, I think right now, probably the, the state that has the least problems in their regulations is probably California. But I would say that kind of with tongue in cheek, because there are a number of things like batch size we just talked about, which has just been horribly done in California. So there is no perfect set of regulations, but I think what we see is the ones that come on later have the best regulations. Right now, if I had to say who had the worst regulations, most likely it would be Alaska. No. <laughs> so unfortunately, what tends to happen is cannabis is a very, uh, a very lucrative uh, product. So from a single plant, you can get anywhere from possibly five to 10 pounds, and each pound goes for between $1,500 and $3,000 a pound. So once you get to that level of, of um, you know, revenue for any product, the incidence of trying to save that product at any cost increases. So what has happened in the cannabis industry is now people are trying to, to make bigger grows so that they can make more money. And what has happened is they've stepped into the realm of big agriculture. Big agriculture found early on that when you try to pack too many plants in the same area, you end up with diseases, you end up with mold, you end up with my microbes, and the only way to get rid of those is with, with pesticides. And that's exactly what we're seeing in the cannabis industry right now. And there's an increase in the use of, of pesticides that we see. Uh, over 80% of, of the samples we tested last year had some sort of detectable pesticide. So the, the, the consumer is not necessarily protected, and it's up to the regulators to actually make sure that the pesticide regulations are sane and enforced.